Welcome everybody one more time to our Bible study. My name is Juan Ocasio Borrero. I'm the founder of the House of Truth Christian Ministries. It's a pleasure to have you here. Like I said, that's my name, Juan Ocasio. I'm a watchman watching the world events as take, they take place and fulfill Bible prophecy. Like I said, brought to you by the House of Truth Christian Ministries. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel on this corner, on the bottom corner. Click on the red bar of subscribe. If you want to receive notifications and updates, feel free to click on the bell. If you want to receive such notifications, we uh, gain no money out of this. This is a free service brought to you by the House of Truth Christian Ministries. And, and these are uh, truly yours. And we want to warn the people of the world and the church itself, the church of Jesus Christ in the last days, to depart from sin, to believe in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, to accept him and believe him as the Lord and Savior, the Lamb of God that take away the sin of the world, that he is the Son of God, that he's God in the flesh, that he gave his life for all of us and saved us from the wrath to come. And on the third day, he rose again. He resurrected. He sits on the right-hand side of the majesty of the Father. Uh, he's coming back. He's coming back soon with a double purpose. One, to rapture his body, his church, his bride. After that, he will unleash his wrath, the wrath of his Father and himself, the Lamb of God, in a period that has never been seen in the history of this world called the tribulation and the great tribulation that will culminate or climax in the coming of Jesus Christ in heaven, in the clouds, with great power, great glory, and judgment. We make echo to the world's to the words of the prophet Isaiah who wrote, which is recorded in Isaiah chapter 62, verses 6 and 7. And I read, I have set watchmen, that's God setting watchmen, upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence, and give him no rest, Till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. We abide by the word of God, the Holy Bible. We commonly use the King James Version. If you use another version, that's fine with me. But I found King James Version, although in uh, Old English, is word by word compatible to the Hebrew Aramaic scriptures of the Old Testament and the Koine Greek of the New Testament. Okay? Uh, put that down. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to all those who remain uh, loyal to the channel, the cry of the watchman, to uh, the people who watch us through Facebook and other social media services. All right, we don't want to discard any of you. Feel free to subscribe to our channel and to share it because this is life saving information. For the past few weeks, I was absent for a couple of weeks. First, I was uh, sick, but now I feel much better. Thank God for the healing. Uh, we've been teaching in uh, the church about why to read and study the Holy Bible. And we got this presentation a few weeks back in our channel. You can find it on YouTube, why to read and study the Bible. We also, that's the first, first part. Second part, it is the Holy Bible, a supernatural book of prophecy that we discussed also a few weeks back. And now we come to the third part or third installment of this series about the Holy Bible. And I want you to pay close attention. The first two was about the uh, why the church and the non-believer need to read and study the Holy Bible. One, because it's the word of God. Second, is inspired by the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Third, God inspired 40 holy men to write down the purposes of God for man, his plan of redemption, of salvation, to save men from the wrath to come through Jesus Christ 
his only begotten son who came 2,000 years ago and shed his blood on the cross. He destroyed the power of sin that causes death and ultimately judgment in fire in hell and also the lake of fire for those whose name is not in the book of life. We have been spared from the wrath to come. We have received everlasting life, according to John chapter 3, verse 16. For God promised eternal life, says Titus chapter 1, verse 2, that God cannot lie. He promised from the, since the foundation of the earth through Jesus Christ and is by faith. There's nothing you or I can do to deserve salvation, eternal life in God's kingdom is all through the grace and love and mercy of God through His Son, Jesus Christ. Also, we show by the words that are found in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning, the phrases in the beginning, is uh, transliterated from the Hebrew Bereshith, and which basically means, after decoding the each letter of, of that expression, Bereshith, Uh, the house of the great God shall be destroyed by his own hand. We also discuss about the holy name of God, which is found more than 7,000 times in the whole Bible, which is replaced with expression the Lord or Adonai, the tetragrammaton or the four letters of the name of God, which means transliterated and translated, behold the nail, behold the hand which says basically, in other words, that Jesus, who's God, had to die, his hands nailed on the cross, so you and I can live forever. Not just live this life and die, but to live a life forever with God in his kingdom through his son. That's a summary of those two PowerPoint slides. If you want to have more information about it, if you want me to send you this Uh, PowerPoint slides, which is full of Bible verses and other information which is relevant, let me know. Send your emails at one.ocasio71 at gmail.com. J U A N dot O C A S I O 71 at gmail.com. And send me your questions, and I will, be, I will be more than glad to send you this information free of charge. Okay. So now let's go to our third installment, which is the Holy Bible, evidence of accuracy from God. We have already declared that the Holy Bible is holy for it comes from God, the most high God, the only God. It's holy because it's pure. It has retained its integrity since uh, all the writers passed away. The Bible is still here. All right, and we we show examples of God's power to control the outcome of things through prophecy, which prophecy we define as history written beforehand. All right, so the Holy Bible evidence of its accuracy. We're gonna see extra biblical evidence that the Bible is accurate in every sense of the world. That many things and all things that are found in the Bible have been proved and corroborated, tested, and found true by men in professionals of different fields. Archaeology, paleontology, cosmology, astronomy, uh, zoology, botani botanical, whatever that is, the field of expertise, most of the scientists, and many of them skeptics who have tested the Bible, the places of the Bible, the times of the Bible, the people of the Bible, even the animals and the environments where the Bible was written has been proven. Cities that were lost forever were found by using the Bible as their tool of reference far superior to the uh, Egyptian hieroglyphs, to the uh, Sumerian, Akkadian, and Babylonian coniforms, and other scriptures from nations that were in the time when the writers were alive. Okay? So the Holy Bible, evidence of its accuracy from God, and here we go. Let's go to the first slide, and we're going to read a summary. Actually, I... Uh, Give credit to Chuck Missler, a 
Christian scientists who actually made this fascinating discovery. The gospel is hidden in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The gospel, the good news, the good tidings of God's kingdom in the hands of Jesus Christ has been found in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. The, in the Old Testament, the gospel is the New Testament concealed. In the New Testament, the Old Testament is revealed. And the gospels, which is written by Matthew, the tax collector, Mark, the disciple, Luke, the medic, and John, the apostle, point out to the life, the ministry, the sufferings, death, the uh, resurrection, the glorification, the rapture of the church, the final judgment, and the everlasting kingdom of Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God, and Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is the center of all scripture. And that's the premise we go from. All right? So this is a summary of the other two PowerPoint slides from the two previous classes. Here we have the uh, Bible text written by Peter in his second letter, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 19 through 21. And I read, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, that means you pay attention carefully, as unto a light that shineth in the dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture, that means of the Holy Bible, no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Peter is mentioning several things. The scriptures, the Holy Scriptures, which is the Bible, prophecy, God's prophecy revealed throughout the scriptures. In the times of Peter, they have the Hebrew Aramaic scriptures from Genesis to Malachi. Shortly after the death, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ is when his life was written in the Gospels and the letters of Paul, Peter, James, and Jude, and John were written. And, of course, the Revelation, which was the last book written. Peter is saying that the, the prophecy is not inspired or didn't come by the imagination or conception of man, but that the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of God, inspired holy men, not any kind of men, men who were holy, separated to worship, exclusive worship with God, were chosen by God himself to write his will. And there is the gospel. Who is that they star? that will arise in our hearts. Basically, when we were in sin, we were in darkness. When we were lost in the world, in our lusts and desires and selfish and idolatrous, immoral ways, we were in darkness. However, we were illuminated or received light from the day star or the dawn that comes in. But who is that light? Good question. Here's the answer. The answer is found in Revelation chapter 22, the last part of the verse. Chapter 22, verse 16, the last part says, I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. These are words of our Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He said, I am. He always says, I am. The short name of God in the Hebrew scriptures is, I am, I am that I am. Jesus always says, I am the good shepherd. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I am the living waters. I am the, the bread or the manna that came from heaven. I am the gate. I am the good shepherd. I am, I am, I am. And now Jesus says that he is the root and offspring of David. That means that Jesus was before David. 
and he was after David, for he was descended by bloodline and royal line of David the king, who was a man after God's own heart. For Jesus also reveals to the believer that he is a bright and the morning star. That's why we must pay attention. That's why we must heed or pay close or attention, attentive concentration in the prophecy of the Holy Bible. For it will not just illuminate our hearts, minds, and eyes with the knowledge and the mysteries of God, but also we will be filled with the light of Christ, which is found in the Holy Ghost. Do you understand? Here comes the next slide, prophecies that were fulfilled. We're going to see about three or four prophecies that were fulfilled. They were prophesied in the Holy Bible and were actually fulfilled. That's, these things did happen. Like I said, prophecy is history written beforehand. Uh, we will show you evidence beyond the Bible or besides the Bible, extra biblical, if you will, evidence that these four events did take place and there's concrete evidence even skeptics must think twice before they say that these things never happen in, in which is mentioned in the bible let's look, look at some examples the fall of jerusalem the fall of jerusalem that happened in 586 bc bc stands before christ in the book of nehemiah the chapter 1 verse 3 it is written, and they said unto me, the remnant that are left of the captivity. What captivity? When Nebuchadnezzar came and destroyed Jerusalem, he took captives, Daniel, uh, Misael, Azariah, and Ananiah were kidnapped, basically, from Jerusalem and taken into the course of Nebuchadnezzar and he renamed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and then he renamed Belshazzar in name of his pagan gods. And not just them, but youth and people of power, people of influence were taken. Even King Jehoiakim was taken captive. And he keeps reading. They, that they are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Nehemiah was the cupbearer of King Cyrus. Here you see a picture on the extreme right about a cuneiform tablet that was written during the reign of Babylonian king slash emperor Nebuchadnezzar or Nebuchadnezzar. This is the chronicle of Nebuchadnezzar in which in cuneiform scripture of the times of the Babylonians narrates the conquest of Jerusalem and the capture of their king Jehoiachim or Jehoiakim who was taken into prison his sons were murdered by Nebuchadnezzar in front of the king. And the eyes of King Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, who rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar, his eyes were plucked out after he saw his children being killed. This chronicle of Nabonidus was written, of course, in Babylon. It has no relationship whatsoever with the scriptures, with the prophets like Jeremiah, Nehemiah, Ezra. And the likes for this was written by the scribes of Nebuchadnezzar. And here it shows that King Jehoiakim of Judah, or the tribe of Judah, who was the tribe that was invaded, destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar, the walls were destroyed, the temple was destroyed and ransacked. The gold was taken into the treasury of Babylon. As narrated in Second Chronicles, as narrated in the book of Daniel and other Bible references. But this is an extra biblical reference that the fall of Jerusalem did happen, that the king was captured by name. This is tremendous amount of information that shows us that the Bible is not a book, a good book, because it contains moral code or 
uh, philosophical virtues, but that is inspired by God because many times in the Bible, even in the book of Deuteronomy, the, the Joshua, in the Old Testament, there were prophecies and many prophecies that will provide blessings to the people of Israel upon obedience to the rules, regulations, and laws of God and the curses and punishments for those who break them. And in this one, we see a, a very sad outcome of the disobedience of the Israelites who disobey God, who perform numerous acts of idolatry, sexual immorality, fornication. They did not take care of the poor and the widow. They kill and shed innocent blood and did much worse than the nations that they subjugated. That's proof number one, the chronicles of Nabonidos that depict the fall of Jerusalem. Here comes the next. Here comes the fall, actually, of Babylon and his king, of course, and the king Cyrus the Persian. The time is around 516 BC, 70 years after the fall of Jerusalem, comes the fall of Babylon. The empire is king Belshazzar, according to Daniel chapter uh, 9, I think it is. He was captured and killed and slain the same night by the Middle Persians. Cyrus was the Persian king that entered Jerusalem, uh, Babylon and slain the king. And after that, Darius takes charge of the city. Darius being of 60, 62 years old, while Cyrus was much longer, younger because the Medes and the Persians had a coalition a partnership, a confederation to destroy their common enemy, Babylon. Here we see in Isaiah chapter 44, verse 28, the prophecy that the prophet Isaiah, of course, pro, uh, proclaimed about King Cyrus. And he says, that saith of Cyrus, that means that the Lord God said of Cyrus, Cyrus, he is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, thou shalt be built, and to the temple, thy foundation shall be laid. And the interesting fact is that if you look in the bottom right part of this slide, you see a kind of a cylinder, also written in cuneiform, which is the language of the Babylonians, and the people of Mesopotamia, we see this is Actually, the cylinder of Cyrus the Persian. In this cylinder, because back then there was no paper, uh, usually everything was made in clay, uh, tablets of clay, used a stylus to write down uh, in cuneiform form the tales uh, and records, official records of commerce and military campaigns in the different kingdoms and empires. Uh, the kingdom of Persia and Media was not an exception. They relate in detail the fall of Babylon and the slaying of the king of the time, which was Belshazzar. And mind you, Daniel, who was taken into exile by Nebuchadnezzar, most likely Nebuchadnezzar II, according to secular uh, historians, he survived Nebuchadnezzar, he survived Nabonidus, who's the son of Nebuchadnezzar II, and the son of Nabonidus, who is Belshazzar. Here is proof that Cyrus did exist and was prophesied over 100 years before the king appeared on the earth. Isn't that amazing that the Bible provides the name of the conqueror of Babylon, that not just that, that the king did exactly what God asked and prophesied that he will do. He will make a proclamation that all the Israelites, all the Jews that were in Babylon and the rest of the world are allowed, authorized to go back to the natal land, Israel, to rebuild the walls that are fallen and burned on their gates and to rebuild the temple and to resettle back in the land that was promised to them. That 
My friend, is prophecy fulfilled? That's evidence number two. And we're going to see the next slide for more evidence. This is before that, much that. This is during the conquest of the promised land or Canaan, when Joshua, the minister of Moses, upon his uh, death, Joshua received the anointing of the Lord and he became actually their leader in succession of Moses. Uh, he entered into a massive campaign, not just of invasion, but of wars. When he entered and crossed the River Jordan, miraculously, just like Moses entered the Red Sea miraculously by the power of God and the Holy Ghost, uh, Joshua did a similar feat. Miraculous, the people of Israel entered the promised land, the land of Canaan, full of Amorites, Parasites, Hittites, uh, Philistines, Rephaim, Nephilim, and they subjugated nation after nation until they got settled. Here in the, what, the first city that was conquered on, upon the crossing of the Jordan River was the city of Jericho. Uh, by uh, by the hand of God through Joshua. We know the tale very well in Joshua chapter 6, verse 26, that the, the walls crumbled after six days of marching silently. The armies of the Lord marched silently once every day through the city of Jericho, around the walls of Jericho, they were following the Ark of the Covenant and the trumpeteers were blowing the horns. Once every day, nobody made a sound but the trumpets or the shofars. On the seventh day, God instructed uh, Joshua to uh, march seven times around Jerusalem, uh, around, around Jericho, I mean. And this time, at the end of the seventh turn, God told Joshua to shout because God has given the city to Israel, and when Joshua shouted, and the people of Israel shouted, the walls of Jericho fell. Only one piece of the wall remained, and according to the Holy Scriptures, the house of Rahab, which was on the wall, is the only part of the wall that survived the, the falling, the destruction of the wall. After that, all the People from Jericho were killed, except their family of Rahab. And Rahab became descendant, actually, of Jesus Christ, for she was the great-grandmother of King David. Here on the bottom left part of the slide, you will see the actual ruins that were found in Israel of ancient Jericho. Of course, Jericho was rebuilt several times. And but this you see a part of the wall that actually is dated from the time of, of Joshua, and this is part of the wall that remained. Most of the if you see around the picture, most of the whole wall has been crumbled down. Okay, this is another evidence that the fall of Jericho did happen. And by the way, Jericho is one of the most ancient cities, is mentioned in the Bible. All right. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was founded by actually Cain, the son of Adam himself. So he's very old and the city of Jericho fell. But also we have also in the Bible that Joshua pronounced a curse. Actually, is uh, not visible the whole text in the slide. But let me go to uh, Joshua chapter 6. And verse 26, and here it reads, And Joshua adjured them at that time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord that riseth up and buildeth this city Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn, and in his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. Joshua cursed the city destroyed. He said that whomever... Rebuilds the walls, his firstborn will die. And whomever finishes putting the gates on Jericho will lose his youngest son. 
And according to the Bible, that did happen. Okay? It is interesting that that um, curse did happen. All right? So this is another proof that the historicity of the Bible, because the city of Jericho was founded by archaeologists using the Bible as the main reference of history. Let's go to another slide. Here is about the birth of Jesus Christ. According to Micah chapter 5, verse 2, the prophet Micah declared, But thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be the ruler of Israel, whose goings forth have been from all from of old, from everlasting. Here we see that Micah, the prophet, is talking about the city of Bethlehem. Why is Bethlehem so important? Well, several ways. One, Bethlehem is the city where Rachel died. It's the city where Jesus was born, our Savior was born. This is the city uh, that, if you translate Bethlehem to English, means house of bread. Jesus is the breath of heaven. But not just that. Uh, Bethlehem also could be translated house of meat. Jesus became the lamb of God that take away the sins of the world. There are two things interesting here. One, this picture that is on the right side, I will explain in a moment. And two. It was in a few years ago that in Bethlehem, the uh, Jew authority of antiquities found a stone manger. A stone manger, according to the Bible, and our Lord was laid by Mary and Joseph in a manger in swaddling clothes. This manger was not a wooden manger. According to Bethlehem, Bethlehem had stone made mangers and the animal that was laid there was none other than the lamb that was going to be sent to uh, Jerusalem uh, four days before the Passover that means we're talking about the 10 of Nisan the holy month of Nisan the 10 of Nisan the lamb will remain in that um, uh, stone manger so it cannot be uh, uh, hurt or defected, it will remain there safely until the 10th of Nisan that will be taken to Jerusalem to be examined for any defects or imperfections by the high priest. And after it is approved by the high priest, then four days later, the lamb will be sacrificed during the Pesach or the Passover. Isn't that interesting that Jesus was laying exactly in the same manger that the lamb used to lay down there until it was taken to Jerusalem prior to its slaughter for the Passover. Then Jesus, hence, is the lamb of God that take away not just the sin of the world once during Yom Kippur or the Day of Atonement, but Jesus is the same blood represented in the doorpost when the angel of death passed during Passover when Israel was enslaved by the Egyptians. And that day, which is the 10th plague, the angel of death passed over, skipped basically the houses of the Israelites where the blood of the land was in the three doorposts. But the angel took the lives of every firstborn of Egyptian man and animal as a punishment for Pharaoh's stubbornness to not let his people go and worship him. Now, if you look on the right side of this slide, this is a truly official Roman table or tablet in which Quirinius tells about the census that happened by Caesar, I think Tiberius, demanded a census to be done 
to tax all the world that was known by the Roman Empire. Let me read it directly from the Bible in Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. A thing that is interesting about Luke is that Luke is the only writer of the New Testament that was not a Jew. He was a Greek medic, doctor, basically. And he was a Christian medic, was a Greek, but he was well organized and well informed about the whereabouts and the mystery and life of Jesus, the miracles of Jesus, the death by crucifixion, his burial, resurrection. And he also wrote the book of Acts of the Apostles. Listen to what Luke wrote, which is found in chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. And I read, And it came to pass in those days, that means in the times of uh, Joseph and Mary to uh, give birth to Jesus, and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus, Augustus, that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. This title that you see on the right side, it was from Syria, telling about the census upon the land of Israel, which back then comprised also the land of Canaan and Palestine. And verse 3 says, And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. Look at the knowledge, accurate knowledge of Luke the Medic. Verse 5, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. This is more proof. Actually, this is closer to the times of the birth of Jesus Christ because this table actually proves what the Bible has been saying for over 2,000 years. That the Caesar, in this case Augustus, I thought it was Tiberius, but it's Augustus, declared a tax, a, an a census. With the census, he will know how many people were in his empire and he will tax everybody so he can fund whatever he wanted to be um, taxed. And here Luke provides the evidence, but here you see the tablet that actually tells about the formal uh, command from Caesar for all people in the promised land, or which was called Palestine, I call it Israel, to be taxed, proving that the Gospels are true, that the Gospels are correct, that the whole Bible is correct. The next most historical proof, you see three pictures here on the upper right corner. This is an actual um, heel bone that was found with a Roman nail found in Venice. And apparently this looks like from a leg or a foot of a man who was crucified. Here in the modern uh, forensics, you may not have a, a body, a whole body, to find the cause of death, the age, the temperature of the body, and, and the likes. But if you find a tooth, or you find a piece of cloth, you find a clue to find the whereabouts of the person who's missing. Here you see a heel bone being pierced by a Roman nail and there are pieces of wood attached to both the bone and the nail. For those skeptics that doubt that crucifixions were common in the Roman Empire and that Jesus Christ was not crucified, this is proof that there were actual crucifixions during the times of our Lord Jesus Christ who actually was crucified for showing the people the way to God through him and by the envy and hatred of the high priest Caiaphas and Annas and the Sanhedrin, the council, and the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and lawyers of the law hated Jesus.
for he exposed their hypocrisies. And Jesus showed the love of God with many signs and wonders and miracles. And they saw him. They were there all the time. Yet they crucified their Savior. On the bottom part, below the, the bone, you see a piece of parchment with a highlight in blue. This is the records of Tacitus. Tacitus was a Roman historian and governor of Syria. And it's interesting that I found, while I was doing my research, in the annals of Cornelius Tacitus, the writer, something very interesting, but for the sake of time, I will not uh, read everything, but in the book 15, paragraph 44, he is relating the burning of Rome by Nero Caesar, and that he blamed the Christians. Listen to what he said, and he's here in uh, basically verse 28 or, or, or Paragraph 44 in the Annals of Cornelius Tacitus, book 15. Look into it and look at what he wrote. Christus, the founder of the name, Christus is the Latin form of Christos or Messiah in Hebrew, which is Christ, the title of Christ, Jesus. Christus, the founder of the name, had undergone the death penalty in the reign of Tiberius by sentence of the procurator Pontius Pilate. See, he's talking about Christ, Tiberius, and Pontius Pilate, or Pontius Pilatus. And the pernicious superstition was checked for a moment, only to break, well, break out once more, not merely in Judea, the home of the disease, but in the capital itself, Rome, where all things horrible or shameful in the world collect and find a vote. Basically, Nero blamed the burning of Rome to the Christians. For the Christians were spreading the gospel so fast around the world, not just Greece and Asia Minor, but throughout the Roman Empire. And the gospel came to Rome. And Nero, losing power and fearing to lose power to the Christians, he accused the Christians of burning uh Rome, and he started a wave of persecution in which thousands and tens of thousands of our Christian brethren in the first century were burned on stakes, were crucified in many horrendous forms. Their wives and children were launched to the lions in the coliseums and the sporting arenas to be killed by these beasts and gladiators. There's evidence aside from the Bible, that prove that what the Bible says is true. Now, on the lower left hand, left hand, we see a finely carved ivory box. This box was found and is preserved in the Israeli Museum of Antiquities and is the ossuary. Ossuary is merely a box that contains the bones of a person, an ossuary. But it belongs to a man that is written in the Bible, especially in the Gospels, as known as Caiaphas. Caiaphas was the high priest in the times of the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ on earth. Come on now. You're telling me that there's no other Caiaphas. And this man, of course, being high priest, had money and power and influence. These very important religious men were actually taken care of even during their death. Uh, his bones were preserved in this box. And in the bottom of the box says Caiaphas, high priest. I'm not making this stuff up. You can look into it. I'm giving you proof that the Bible has more than enough evidence in itself and outside the Bible that proves that every word, every prophecy, Every city, every person, every prophet, every event that took place, and every prophecy that has been proclaimed has been fulfilled. It's been fulfilled. I will continue to be fulfilled until the very end. Here comes the next slide. 
Tacitus mentioned Pontius Pilate just as the Gospels and the letters in the New Testament talks a lot about Pontius Pilate, who was the prefect or procurator of Judea. Here we have two things that are actual evidence of that. He was a real person. In the upper right corner, you see a coin, both the inverse and the reverse of a silver coin with the inscription of Pontius Pilate, Pontius Pilatus in Latin. And also on the bottom of this coin, on the bottom right, there's a, 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 a tablet or table that says the name Ius Pilatus because it's in decay, but it says Ius Pilatus, basically Pontius Pilatus, prefect of Judea. If you can't believe that Jesus is real, there's evidence that even the man who sent Jesus to the cross, who sent him to be flogged, that due to fear, of men due to fear to lose his position as procurator or prefect of uh, Judea. Even his wife warned him not to mess with this just man who is Jesus. He washed his hands cowardly and he gave to the religious leaders using his own truth our Lord and Savior to be crucified. But yet we see secular evidence that Pontius Pilate did exist. Why then can't you believe that Jesus Christ was a living, breathing man who's God in the flesh, yet a man here on earth during the three and a half year ministry, and he was tried by Pontius Pilate. On the left hand, you see these uh, like stones, pavement, that's part of the road that actually was built by Pontius Pilate. And this is confirmed also by the authorities of antiquities of Israel. Do you need more evidence? Do you need more proof? Is it hard for you to believe the Bible? Look at all the supporting uh, documents and, and, and archaeological evidence that these events and these kings, these names did happen. Here's the question. Do you need more proof? Let me read the whole slide. In regard to Julius Caesar, check it out. Julius Caesar. Everybody knows Julius Caesar. Even the month July is dedicated to him. In regard to Julius Caesar, the key sources are his own accounts of the Gallic Wars, of, of the, the wars against uh, Gallia, the French, the speeches of Cicero, Salus' account of Catiline's War, Suetonius' section on Caesar in 12 Caesars, and Plutarch's section on Caesar in Plutarch's Lives. That's all the information you can find about Julius Caesar. He, the, what he wrote about himself, and the records of the wars with France, and the book of Suetonius and Plutarch. And Caesar. And we have very few scripts of Julius Caesar, about 20. Now, let me read these last two paragraphs. The New Testament was written in first century AD, Anno Domini, the, the year of the Lord. There are some 25,000, mind you, 25,000 early manuscripts in existence almost 6,000 of which many being only recognizable fragments are Greek texts and the others being early translations of the Greek New Testament. The earliest textual evidence we have was copied not long after the original. 20 manuscripts that tell the tale of the life of Julius Caesar and here we have on the New Testament alone of the ministry and life and gospel of Jesus Christ, 25,000, almost 6,000 that are pieces. Remember this about 2,000 years ago, 
And many of these are so close to the original writings. But look at the last one. In the old synagogue in Cairo, Egypt, were discovered 260,000, 260,000 Hebrew manuscripts, 10,000 of which are biblical manuscripts. There are more than 200 biblical manuscripts among the Dead Sea Scrolls, found in the case of Qumran. Some of them were written in the Paleo-Hebrew alphabet. Before the modern language and writing of Hebrew, there was a Paleo-Hebrew, very ancient form of Hebrew. And these scriptures from Genesis to Malachi were written. Add 260,000 plus 25,000. Are we talking about 310,000 pieces and manuscripts from the Old Testament and the New Testament that talk about God and the Holy Scriptures these come to us entirely preserved? And you're still looking for evidence about the historicity, canonicity, canon, canonicity, accuracy, of every prophecy, of every person, every event, every word that was spoken and written for our benefit? Do you still have doubts about the Holy Bible? It's clear in my mind that I believe that the whole Bible is the written, inspired Word of God. Look at this part. The Apostle Paul wrote this, according to the Holy Scriptures, witnesses of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Paul wrote, For I deliver unto you first of all, all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And that he was seen of Cephas, that's Peter. Then of the twelve, the twelve apostles. After that, he was seen of above, of above, of above 500 brethren at once. More than 500 disciples of Christ saw him at once of whom the greater part remain unto this present. That's during the time of Paul writing. Many of them still alive, but some are falling asleep. That means they die. After that, he was seen of James. Who's James? They have brother of Jesus. Then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. What do I mean by this? That Jesus' resurrection, Jesus remained on the earth about 40 days, resurrected. And Jesus was still visiting his apostles, his family, his disciples for 40 days before he was taken up in heaven. According to Acts chapter 1, he went up to heaven and he was uh, hid by a cloud. And two men dressed in white that were angels told the men, Hey, men of Galilee, why are you looking? In, uh, up in the sky. In the same way he left, he's coming back. Now, let me ask you, if you are Muslim or Buddhist or any kind of other religion that is not Christianity. For over 3,500 years, Israelites... And Christians have died. But in the past 2,000 years, till the very day, today, the very day, in this very second, hundreds, if not millions of Christians have died believing that our Savior died and rose from the dead. Would you think that I will die for a man that never rose from the dead? That the religion called Christianity is false because Jesus did not rise from the dead. 
However, there are over 500 living witnesses that saw Jesus for 40 days after he was resurrected. And they died. And they were in prison. They were buffeted, expelled from the synagogues. They had to run away. Many of them in hunger, running from place, place to place. Some of them were murdered, crucified, cut in pieces, drowned, burned, whichever way to stop the spread of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And these people, do you think that my brethren would have died for a lie? I don't think so. I know Jesus lives. And not just because of all this overwhelming evidence found in the Holy Bible and the secular extra biblical evidences I have shown you much more. But because he is who he says he is. The son of God. The Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one of God who gave his life on the cross for your sins. My sins, my transgressions, my failures, my lusts, my selfish ways. And he gave me a new birth, a new life in himself by my faith in the grace of God through him. No matter how many prayers you say, no matter how many alms or acts of giving or kindness you do, how many penances you perform. You cannot gain the love and the access to heaven or to God the Father alone. You need to believe in his son, Jesus Christ. For he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, that whosoever believeth in him, not that you do all these things, but believeth in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's what makes Christianity different than any religion in the world. From Islam, to Buddhist, to Shinto, to the native religions of Americas, or the Celtic cultures, or the pagans and neo-pagans, even Satanists, all that. None of them can bring salvation. None of them can bring redemption. None of them can bring us to the Father. But to Christ alone by faith. And it was according to scriptures. They were living witnesses of the resurrection of our Lord. The Bible, past, present, and future. Abraham Lincoln said of the Bible. This great book is the best gift God has given to man. All the good the Savior gave to the world was communicated through this book. But for it, we could not know right from wrong. That's found in Abraham's speeches and writings from 1859 to 1865. Martin, Martin Luther, the so-called father of the Reformation, he wrote, a man's word is a little sound that flies into the air and soon vanishes. But the word of God is greater than heaven and earth, yea, is greater than death and hell, for it forms part of the power of God and endures everlastingly. Sir Isaac Newton wrote also that we account the scriptures of God to be the most sublime philosophy. There are more sure marks of authenticity in the Bible than in any other book ever written. Three men, Abraham Lincoln, Martin Luther, and Isaac Newton, live in different eras. They trust in the, in the Bible. Questions? Isn't that something that the Bible came from God as a gift to man? It shows the plan of salvation and redemption from the fall of man in Genesis and brings us back to full restoration 
back to the Father through Christ Jesus in new heavens and a new earth and a new city of Jerusalem where God and the Lamb will reign forever. And the Bible is so good that gives us hope in midst of a decaying and fallen world. It gives the, the Christian a breath of love of God. And we can reflect on the Holy Scriptures, not just to live a moral life, but to share these prophecies, these words of our God, that His kingdom that shall not be destroyed, not passed to another man, will surely be fulfilled if in not in my generation, in the near future. For if you knew what I know about what's happening, you'd be repented of your sins. You'll be converted to Christ Jesus and believing in him as the Son of God. That he died on the third day, rose, and he sits on the right hand of the Father. He's coming back in judgment. Don't wait till it's too late. Don't be left behind in the rapture. Seek God now. Isaiah chapter 55 says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon his name while he's yet near. Let the wicked man forsake his ways and return to the Lord. For he will show mercy and will forgive. To the church, just like Solomon prayed, and when God said, If my people, not just Israel, but the church, which is called by my name, will repent and turn from the evil ways and seek my face. I will hear from heaven. I will forgive the sins and heal the land. Those are promises that are everlasting. Promises that are everlasting. Therefore, the Bible, the Holy Bible, is a book of prophecy. It establishes the plan of salvation of God through Jesus Christ. And that each one of us can make a choice and choose life eternal with Christ Jesus through him by faith and by faith alone. That's the essence of the gospel. And in that day, there will be no more death, no more sickness, no more old age, no more crime, no more pain, no more suffering, no more evil, no more robbery, no more thieves, no more broken families. For everything that was that is now bad, will be a thing of the past and will never come back. But there will be peace, an everlasting peace in God's kingdom. This is the whole world for today. The Bible, evidence, is overwhelming. And I advise you to seek God now while there is time. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at one dot ocasio 71 at gmail.com. Or leave me a message in the YouTube channel, on the Facebook, or the social media where this recording is being posted, okay? Until the next time, by the will of God, keep reading the Bible, keep studying it, meditate, pray to the Lord for wisdom and understanding, insight, and discernment.